Our next game for the show is Sewer Shark, nominated by At Griff, who I think is nominated Thanks. another game, but I, I forget. But thank you, I guess. It was developed <laughs> by Digital Pictures, who no one has ever heard from again, and That's published by true. Sony ImageSoft. Uh, released for the Sega CD on October 15th, 1992. Yeah, it was, it was pretty much a launch title, I think. Uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but it was basically a launch title for the Sega CD. It was CD. a packing game, wasn't it? One it time. was, but it was a packing game later on. It wasn't packing from the start, um, which is an important note. It is the best-selling Sega CD game because it was I, a packing game. I guess I can understand that. If you're trying to give, like, the best example of what the Sega CD was meant to do, you pick Sewer Shark, even if it's not the best game. They uh, really missed the chance to give us uh, the Make My Video series. I mean, I, you know, I, I guarantee you the Sega CD would have been better remembered if it came with Marky Mark or Criss Cross or what have you. Was there an NXS? There was an NXS, yes. That was the third one, that's, yes. That's the one, that's the one to get. Yeah, I, I have to agree. <laughs> so, I mean, it's definitely a conceptual demo of we can play video on your console. Right. That's, is, do you think this kind of game is really what the Sega CD was meant to do? That's or, that. That is the question of it. Is uh, I feel I mean, like the Sega CD was meant to do Sega Genesis games plus like anime cutscenes. Well, that that's, that's true. Yeah, but, with it. Um, like that's what they played up. That's what was uh, a big deal. FMV. I think when they made the Sega CD, they kind of realized, okay. Um, no one's gonna buy it if we show them pictures of Sonic the Hedgehog because they won't understand that there's CD music. So, uh, um, videos, videos, just, just videos, yeah. that's all it is. Yeah, um, th this was around the time when, uh, in 93, uh, lots of video games, uh, were... 92. 92, oh shoot. Well, early 90s where disc-based media was starting to come to prominence, uh, that's what we call multimedia, a uh, word that our best friend Snarbu uh, threw around a lot in earlier days of GC9X to just describe anything that just excessively uses technology to its limits, whether or More not it should. More than one media. It has words it is very and important images. That, yes. Images and words. Uh, second seminal album by Dream Theater, also. Um, so, there is one thing with this game I want to talk about real quick. This game about was originally meant to come in like the late 80s for a system that was released called the Nemo. What? Which actually, that was the code name. The, the, the proper the name is the uh, Control Vision. I have. Control Vision sounds. I have never heard of like, this. It's a system that ran games like Sewer Shark and Night Trap on videotapes. I. I was this system even released, or did you say it died it's in? Not. The, it died in the water. Who, yeah. Who made, who made the Nemo? Hasbro, actually. Well, that makes sense. Uh, I was hoping it would be like Whammo, creator of the Slip and Slide. And me and Cal were discussing this not long ago. There were some pitch games for the Nemo that apparently were enough to give this game such a massive budget. I believe it's like eight million dollars. How and, could you have? Wow. Eight? What? video game system that ran off of VHS tapes that was not just a VCR. That's actually a very good question. I'm not actually sure how it worked. VHS games or game-like objects were not uncommon. Like, they existed. We should probably talk about the game, though. Sewer uh... Shark is a game about a very angry man who goes from hating the fact you, that you exist to being your best friend in the space of a half hour. So it's uh, kind, kind of like um, future Top Gun in a way. I... Well, actually, he's the original Sunundere. <laughs> I'm going to throw you for that. You guys can have Dog's Bower. My spirit animal is Ghost. I want to know what Ghost deal is. <laughs> I want the Sewer Shark extended universe. You do kind of I feel mean, like you can't see him from the waist down, but yeah. I feel like there's like a Zubaz uh, pair of uh, Zubaz involved. The thing about uh, the Sewer Shark game is that it's really difficult to talk about the game because the world of the universe is kind of the only thing it's got going on that's even remotely interesting. I'm going to be honest, okay? I'm just going to be completely honest. This game is barely a game. I'd say Uncanny X-Men was more of a game than this Sewer Shark is. I am looking at a, a video clip. 20 minutes in looks absolutely no different from 2 minutes in. You're just I, 
going through what appears to be the same uh, mechanical corridors while, like, frogs and bats just Did they float I mean, they're, they're actually the supposed to be rats. I mean, they look like frogs, but they're supposed to be rats. Whatever those yellow things are, yeah. They're, they're rat alligators. <laughs> what is the importance of patrolling Jesus. the sewers? That's what I want to know. Ah, well, you see, you units. are a person that patrols the sewer, and it is important because, uh, the manual doesn't say. The manual, uh, negs you. Uh, there's lots of negging in the manual. Hey, um, careful now. And uh, then uh, it tells you how to play the game, which is important because um, there's a, a couple of pieces about the game that are uh, I wanna... uh, a little bit more difficult. So I will I will explain how the game is actually played, just because I mean, maybe for the three people who don't know what Sewer Shock actually is, uh, you basically it's a shooting gallery where occasionally you have to press a button. Uh, you have to follow a series of commands. The game will tell you like three six three, and that means that. When the game tells you that there's a uh, sort of like an up moving direction, you press the up and B button, um, and then you move to the right, and then you move down. Um, and it gives you fake directions sometimes. Don't go down them because you'll probably die. And then you shoot things, and hopefully you shoot enough. Um, and you can't waste your ammo because you have a constantly expelling amount of energy, and shooting takes your energy. So it's a game where you shoot, and you're not encouraged to shoot. Uh, enemies, when you shoot them, don't always die because it's an FMV, so when you shoot them, you have to uh, shoot them, and then it has to get close enough to play their death animation. It's this, it's great. There's this whole it's thing going like on there. It's a timing thing, right? It's a kind of Dragon Slayer-esque. Yeah, you, it, you, it's, it tries to be seamless about it, but basically the enemies in the actual tube, uh, you can shoot them really far away, and then it'll tag them as being hit, but they won't die until they approach the point where the game can play the they died animation in the frame. It's a, uh, what's the name, a, a, a bit of smoke and mirrors in this game. Uh, it's actually a technical achievement if, uh, you know, it's not good, but it's a technical achievement because uh, one of the reasons it's so kind of repetitious is it's actually running four tracks of video at the same time. And that's on CD. It's it's spooling all of those at the same time, because if you actually play the game, which I don't think anyone would recommend, but you could watch a video of someone else playing it, it's pretty seamless. Like, it doesn't, like, it, it's not like, if you've ever played Dragon's Lair, you'll know, like, every, like, half a second the game stops while it loads the next so decision point. It, it switches, so, like, based on what you do, it switches to, like, the next, like, the That's appropriate right. reel of... It switches to the appropriate reel, but the way that they, uh, you know, encoded or burnt the CD or pressed the CD and the way it's programmed, they're all actually connected together kind of on the actual tracks so that I wonder it loads the, it really quick. The VHS tape had four like concurrent reels yes. on it and this, then like the yes. header would like switch to the appropriate That's reel. Right. Wow. And they had to replicate that on a two speed CD ROM. I think it's two speed. You guys can check. Maybe it's one speed, but they yeah, they had to replicate that on a CD, and either way, that was an insane prospect, and they did it. And I mean, it's not a good game, but that's yeah. pretty interesting technically, and it's one of the reasons the game kind of has to be crap, because they, you can't run it and it also be good. It, so uh, that's the way it works. Can I kind of like a, a yes, Michael Bay yeah. film? I really want to talk about something. This is people need to know about this, okay? Mm -hmm. So I was recording the video for this game, the video version of our podcast. Please watch, subscribe, and all that. The video comes out with 17 minutes. Of that, about 9 minutes and 30 seconds gameplay. But I wanted to do an experiment. I wanted to see what happens. You just did not shoot anything, ever. And as long as you keep hitting the right directions, you don't technically have to shoot anything. I mean, you'll lose eventually, because you need like a certain score to progress, but you can pretty much just eat a sandwich while you're playing this game that wouldn't matter. That's a Enemies plus. Enemies won't attack you. You can just keep going. Just do nothing. It, it is unfortunate that the game is, uh, the pacing's not superb. Uh, kind of actually like a very old arcade game in some ways. It starts slow and then eventually the enemies start being able to hit you to an extent and that just drains your energy. But the early and this is what Bob was at. Like the first 10 minutes, the enemies don't hit you. In the interest of fairness, I tried to actually, my second time through, I actually made an attempt at playing, and it's so hard to hit anything that you'll hardly be, be able to make the score target anyway, and you get yelled at. There's a lot of yelling in this game. 
Yeah, you get yelled at if you don't press shoot when you're told to, which is one of the most amazing parts of this game. There yep. is a point in the game where the uh, ghost character will rig the uh, weapon, wing, rig your, uh, it's not actually called the sewer shark, it's got a specific name, I can't remember what it is. So. Okay, the whole hog, thank you, I'm glad that you know the extended canon of the universe. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, but, uh, he rigs it up with a gun, and then he says, yeah, let's try this baby out, and then he says, three, two, one, and if you don't press shoot at that one, and you have like a, like, I literally like a half a second, one second window, you game over. The game kicks you out. He says, like, you're not serious about this! And then he throws you out of the game, and that's it. Like, you lose. You have to, like, I start couldn't, again. I couldn't really tell what the losing condition... The losing conditions for this game were. It just seems like it just told you to get the hell out whenever it just felt cranky. I, uh, I you know. hit a wall Similar to, instantly yeah. you. Oh, well, Similar, that too, that too. Yeah. Similar, either... You, you die in this game either from taking the wrong direction... Um, not always. Early on in the game, if you take the wrong direction, it won't kill you. Um, but pretty soon it'll just kill you every single time, so it's kind you of You also surprising. have to have a certain score at the, um, uh, at a certain point in the game where, you, where your boss fires you. But yes, much like, uh, much like Night Trap, um, and several other games of this ilk, uh, there are score gates where essentially if you don't have a minimum number by X time, the game will say, you fail, get out of the game. And that's um, like the only reason you have to shoot anything. Which is interesting because from a meta perspective, you're actually disobeying your boss, so... I think I should note that... Actually, Bob, do you want to talk about the boss in question? This game has a, your boss, he's evil, surprising nobody. Presented in FMV, high quality, like 180 by 7 pixel video. Or you can play the 3DO version, that has slightly better video quality. I think That's the 3D, I, I don't know if the 3D version is better in terms of uh, gameplay. I realize that sounds stupid, but um, I don't know which it's, one It's better in the it. sense that you paid like an extra $120 for it, and so <laughs> it damn probably, well better be better. The point yeah. is, probably this game's biggest star is uh, Robert Costanza, I believe his name is. Costanzo, uh, not George Thank Costanza. You. If you look at his IMDb, he's been in a lot of stuff. He's been in Total Recall. It, it, I think he was a... Uh, Quaid's construction worker friend from Earth. Yeah, and he, he was in Die Hard 2 also, um, but probably the role that most geeks uh, know him for is Detective Bullock, the shady policeman on Batman the Animated Series. And uh, I will admit that is actually some decent star power, probably much more than this game deserves. When we talk about the star power, I would like to say that this game about cost three million dollars to put together. Yeah, yeah um, for a late 80s game, it's got some pretty okay CGI. Like, they, they got some actual actors, they built uh, actual sets, the camera work is nice, I mean... In, in, in a sort of indie house way, it is technically impressive, but I just have to ask the blunt question. Uh, did anyone who was developing this ever like, take a step back and look at their product and ask themselves if this game was really worth publishing. By the time anybody could have done that, they'd already spent, like, quarter yeah. million dollars. Uh, they they were was like, a, a yeah, so, nobody's so, gonna admit it's so, not worth what they... So it was a sort of the only way out is through type situation. Uh, yeah, well, what you have to understand about it's this is... kind of like getting a that... fish hook stuck in your hand. Like, you just they, have to keep uh, pushing it through. You can't pull they, it back out. Oof. <laughs> Well, they like started the making this like. game, uh, essentially, they started this game somewhere in about 1986. Um, so if you think about it from that perspective, you know, if you're looking at, like, the NES, and then you're showing, like, full motion video, uh, I can see where, like, someone would think, wow, that's so much better. I'm a 60-year-old executive. I don't understand kids or video games. But wow, video. Like, that's, you know, that's what we're looking at here. Uh, well. Is that actually when the footage was recorded in 1986? Uh, 1986 was when the original uh, demos for the uh, Control Vision Nemo were created. Um, then they went full steam on uh, Night Trap and Sewer Shock after that point. The uh, Control Vision was supposed to come out in 89. They pulled the plug on it two months before they were going to actually kind of roll out. So, uh, oh, I appreciate it. It was going to cost $300, and they realized that no one was going to pay $300 for Sewer Shock, so they... Uh, I, I appreciate that they won to, you know, uh, stick with the sinking ship, but I, I gotta say, compared to Digital Pixar... D Digital Pictures' other magnum opus, uh, Night Trap, or even Double Switch, 
this game is even boringer than those. At least those had an interesting angle. This is just shooting and moving and nothing else, and it's just really sloppy now, here's and the thing, okay? not enticing. Night Trap, you're still sitting and watching things happen, but the game is honest about it. That is the game's central concept. That's a good point, yeah. It does not try to make itself look more exciting than it is, and I can appreciate that. Well, I mean, this game, uh, it tries to be something interesting. It, it is got a lot to do in similar with the uh, Laserdisc games uh, of earlier years, where they were like, let's overlay cool-looking footage with some pictures and maybe people will like it and uh, this game didn't do well uh, in terms of like score I think it kind of averaged like 60 70 percent kind of marks I I'm going off memory here uh, but that's kind of that's about where it would sit you know like I for 1992 this would that this all this game had going for it was wow FMV my um, my question is where does it sit on our list all right very low I'm going to put this under Caverns of Kafka, because like You're I said, insane. this, this barely insane. qualifies as a game, okay? Barely. I, my, my decision that I had thought down, I put it underneath Mario Pinball Land. Um, that's where I placed <sighs> my head. And I can, I, and the reason why is some of those bottom games, something like, those are games that I wouldn't even, you know, I wouldn't even say don't, I wouldn't even say look at them. Like I would say, you don't want to look at these. You don't, Here's I my, don't, they're bad. Don't touch them. Reasoning, okay? The M FMV is entertaining, so it gets one rank above Uncanny X-Men, which is no redeeming qualities. It gets another rank above Eat the Cat, because it is an original concept, not reskinned. But that's as far as it goes for me. Kevin well, Kafka does is is mm. but I mean this game is in its way as ambitious as Caverns of Kafka. This like, game it, is really it is ambitious. Ambitious. Like they're okay. they're Reach exceeded their grasp, but that's not... It is not a complete glitchy mess, so I will allow it to go above Kafka. Like, the thing is, um, when you look at, when you break down what the game is, it is, you know, it, it's okay. You know, the FMP is entertaining. Um, you know, it's you're not gonna hate that bit. It is fun. We're not judging this on the, like, a movie, though. You gotta, you gotta judge it I... on what it has, though. Yeah, what it has is uh, Michael Bay-esque explosions and screaming in your face. I, uh, I would not place this higher than Amagon. As much as I hate Amagon, I will admit this is even turdier than it. But Xerxes, what do you want to say? I, I would say I would put it below Mario Pinball, Pin, Pinball, Pinball Land, uh, above Bill Lambeer's Combat Basketball. Wow, no. Because, no. Oh, all right, all wow. That, that's what really? I've been saying, and really? I, I want to see Xerxes, yeah. What's your... Well, I just say, like, Bill Lambeer's Combat Basketball, the sole redeeming aspect of it is its name. Its license <laughs> is crazy. Uh, Super Shark, it's like, it's an ambitious game. Um, if you play it <clears throat> for... It doesn't take very long to play it and feel like, no. well, I've gotten all there is to get out of this game. And... You do kind of need to see some something like this to get an idea of like, well, this is what people thought games should be like in the future. Back it's really funny because people years genuinely ago. thought in 92, they were like, you know what the future is? It's this. Oh, and yeah. people were thinking that as far back as the mid 80s, which is when this game started production. So it's like you can get an idea of what people thought this could be what games would be in the future. And that that is a useful thing to know like that is something you know i mean so far wonder, yeah from a conceptual level for me uh you know as i said they spent three million dollars on this game but you don't you won't see that you can't like you can't trump sewer shock with some other like game in a lot of ways like it's such a stupid thing, and they spent so much money to make a game of this production value. There are, like, a thousand Amagons. There are, like, hundreds I of agree. just trash platformers and whatever that are horrid. There are but a handful shark. of sewer sharks. That yeah. Okay, I and, can see your reasoning there. I agree with that. And that's, if, you know, if you that's count me, F and be, like, turd boxes to be, like, its own genre... Like, Sewer Shark ranks, you know, relatively in the middle. Yeah, it's not the worst FMV game. It's not it as good as Night Trap. <laughs> no. But, but uh, yeah. 
Um, and, you know, if you're gonna play it, uh, the 3DO version has slightly more footage. Um, actually, surprisingly, there's a little bit of footage that's only used in the 3DO version. And, uh, Sewer Shock does try and take advantage of its FMV format. There are a couple of little, uh, changes in the way the game plays. Uh, yeah, there's one point with recharge stations, um, that... Uh, it shows you a visual graphic, and you have to decide which way to go. So it right. does try, you know. So are we going to put it, so, as I understand it, there are three boats. for right below Mario Pinball Land, right below, or right above uh, Bill Lambert's Combat Basket. It, it was really up to, I think, Balbinator to shift yeah, it. Yeah, I'll, I'll work. Well, I, I was going to argue to place it even lower, but ooh, I think <laughs> we've talked about this game far too long, so I'm just going to say, screw it and call it a day. And we're done.